Negative start considering the handover that we had from Wall Street. It's red across the board in Asia as well. It's a blockbuster quarter from Infosys this time. And now Infi is the fourth IT company to report good set of numbers. Year on year, we're expecting an improvement to 2.3 lakh crores versus 2.07 lakh crores same time last year. Many US stock indices hit new one-year highs before pulling back. City interestingly has initiated a sell on the, on the stock with a target price of uh, 1575. 30 points higher, uh, outsized impact from Infi, I'm assuming, uh, but 20, 24,822. This market reminds me of Amar Akbar Anthony. Growth for persistent is very strong, but the street is a bit concerned about the margin performance. I think the biggest gift that the government can give is just macroeconomic stability. A fresh bout of selling causes a bigger dent in mid cap. Sharpest strategies, top market trends, unmatched perspectives, the trading day's most comprehensive roundup. Stay ahead with NSE Closing Bell, broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Well, it's been that kind of a day after a long, long time, a sobering day when money has been coming off the table, not just in mid caps, but in large caps as well. So we cannot say that we've managed to escape or ignore the global queues today. This is Closing Bell. We're coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. I'm Surabhi Upadhyay. With me, Nigel D'Souza, as well as Mangalam Malu. Hi, it's uh, the second day running, I guess, you know, where the mid caps are actually underperforming. And ahead of the big events that we have, budget just being one of them, I was just looking at some of them. Today, post markets, you have Reliance that reports numbers. Tomorrow, you have HDFC bank reporting numbers. So you have two heavyweights reacting to results on Monday. Thereafter, on Tuesday, you have the budget. And then Thursday, you have the July series expiry. So all these events, uh, the market at a record high, maybe a bit of sobering is good. Well, I think, uh, you know, you're looking for excuses for the market to pull back. And today you have many, actually. Overnight, the queues were weak. Yeah. You're getting into a budget. Normally, getting into a budget, history suggests that the market actually goes into the budget a little bit subdued, which yeah. didn't happen for the last couple of yeah. uh, trading sessions uh, odd. You had that technical glitch globally that's been mm. affecting trade at various yeah. parts of the world as well. So if you want a uh, wonder reason, with plenty of reasons yeah. today. The good news, though, for me is at least yesterday's low is still uh, held yeah. out. We have 50, 60 points away from those levels, uh, 24,500 odd. So it's a bit of a down day. I'm not wor too worried. I think the action continues in the large caps because we have a big event ahead of us. And that's par for the course, uh, I would say. The strength that you're seeing though on SBI, that's telling you a story, right? Because SBI all through the trading session has been holding steady. Well, you have the Nifty Bank as well that's under some pressure, Metals as well. SBI, even now, it's not yet moved into the red. You know, it's as flat as can be. So that's one stock that I'm keeping an eye out on. Though tomorrow, the big queues are going to be coming in from Kotak Mahindra Bank and HDFC Bank as well. Yeah, well, I have to say that after a long time, you know, the way we are reporting on the market is changing. So we are <laughs> going back to the dictionary to get the old adjectives out because, you know, that dip has not really been bought on the Nifty as well. It's been a one-way slide and we, we have just not seen this kind of a chart in a long, long time. Let's see, one hour to go whether anything changes or not. But given all the events uh, that are lined up, perhaps uh, some caution is warranted. Barring some of the IT names, actually even Infosys... Uh, look at it, the pop is just 2%. It started almost 4 5% higher and now the gain is only 2%. Rest of IT is actually cooling off a little bit. Barring LTI, mind tree, some of the other names like TCS are down. Uh, you have ITC for a bit of support. But other than that, it's it's weak. Metals are very weak. Uh, pull up all the metal stocks. Tata Steel, Hindalco, JSW Steel, Beyond the Nifty, things like Nalco, Sale, Metals basically are a no-go area today for the bulls. Well, I'm, I'm liking a couple of these uh, paint names right now, the way they're moving, because Asian Paints was one of the bigger casualties in yesterday's trading session. You know, the street may be putting behind the first quarter weakness, largely because the company's uh, maintained its guidance for this year. The management had told us here itself that, you know, in the second quarter at least, they're looking at 10 to 11% volume growth with improved margins as well. The band that they had given earlier was 18 to 20%. Now they've increased that to 19 to 20% with more likelihood of it being closer to 20%. And in the very near future as well, there could be a hike uh, to the tune of almost 0.5 to 1% in terms of pain prices in the offing. And with all of this, the stock has been quite an underperformer. In fact, from its peak, it's corrected about 20 odd percent. And I was looking at some data. All the financial years, uh, right from 2009, FY 2009, every year, Asian Paints has given you positive returns, barring last financial year, where it was down about 10%. Now, this financial year so far, it's up about 3%. So it's 
coming off a lot of underperformance. Let's see what happens. Uh, they said that, you know, early days to speak about competition, but they still haven't been disrupted. Is the street believing that maybe from here on, things will move up for Asian paints or not? It's something I'll be watching out for. And alongside that, we're seeing a bit of an uptick on Berger and the likes as well. So all these stocks on our radar. You know, I recall having that chat with you, Mangalam, on the day of Asian paints numbers. And I said, actually, the street is positioned for uh, these numbers, yep. for a weak set of numbers. And that's why yesterday, I think, uh, you know, after you spoke to the management, we saw a bit of a recovery. And today as well, the stock is holding yep. steady. So good caller on uh, Asian paints. The stock, going by the numbers, one would have thought it would easily fall 7 8% on. But yesterday, it was down a little bit. And today, in fact, it's almost back to the levels that we saw prior to the results. So that's the kind of move you're seeing on the leader from the cement pack. That's about that for the time being. We're at the low point of the day, 24,550 odd. Let's get in a quick technical check on the markets and how do you position yourself before you get into the weekend? Mitesh Tucker joins us. Well, Mitesh, good afternoon. And uh, it's that sort of a day, right? If you wanted a reason, you've got plenty why the market should pull back. And the Nifty is down 250 points odd, which is, uh, you know, we've been saying it's par for the course. What's the trade out here? What are the levels you're looking at on the downside? And if those levels break, then you'll be getting a little bit cautious. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Nigel. I'm already cautious. I think, you know, the, oh. the reason being, I think the bank nifty indicators and the nifty indicators are not showing any confidence on the upside and we have an event approaching. So maybe there could be some profit looking before the event, which is today and on Monday. And that looks a quite likely scenario, but uh, look, Talk, talking about levels, I think the Bank Nifty has important support around 51,940,950 zones. And the Nifty, I think, corresponding levels are uh, uh, 24,420 uh, uh, to about 24,300. Uh, uh, I think that entire 100 point band is filled with supports. But the indicator setup is still suggesting that, you know, we could at least test them. And in some negative news case scenario, which happens if, if it ha if it comes with the event, then I think, you know, we might be even be ready to go below them. So I'm not very comfortable. One, we have exited all long positions. Two, now exploring some shorting opportunities in the market. So that's the way we're approaching. Though in the shorting side, IT and FMCG is off the limits. I think, you know, I would still want to buy them maybe at lower levels. Oh, that's interesting. On the stock are... side, hmm. so, go ahead. Yeah. On the stock side, I have a sell on uh, Canfin Home. Uh, keep a start at about 865. Look for targets of roughly around 820. And the other one is a sell on uh, Coal India, which I would recommend selling with a stop at about uh, 497 for targets of 470. All right. Uh, shorting uh, the market right now and uh, a couple of stocks as well on his radar. Mitesh, we'll come back to you in just a bit. Uh, uh, there are some comments coming in from the IT minister. They're saying that uh, the Meti is in touch with Microsoft and his associates regarding the outage right now. And the reason for the outage has been identified. Updates have been released to resolve this issue at the earliest. Uh, Infosys, however, is one of the stocks. Yes. Uh, yep. No, uh, sorry, on, on the issue of this outage, I was trying to read what's going on. It's a global issue. Hmm. And the company that's associated with Microsoft, it's called CrowdStrike. Hmm. And that's a, uh, that's a service provider uh, in terms of cybersecurity. And it seems that that's where the crash and the failure really has come in from. And by the way, since it's a listed company on Wall Street, uh, you know, in after hours trading, those shares are already down 14, 15%. So it's a big issue. But let's see, I mean, maybe uh, they'll get a handle on it and things will normalize soon enough. All right, we do that. And we also have the numbers of Blue Dart at the bottom of your screen. 13% uh, down on the net profit, even though there was an uptick in the revenue. So maybe it's a bit of a margin compression that we're seeing the stock down about 5%. The street was hoping for some pickup in e-commerce. Uh, seems like it hasn't happened in at least, uh, you know, the first quarter. Let's see how the festive season and all the other parts play out. Typically, Blue Dart does have some sort of correlation when it comes to the e-commerce business with something like uh, a delivery as well. So pull up that chart as well. So the EBITDA is up 5.8%. Margins have compressed by about 30 basis points. So the net profit decline may not be as big. Stock is lower. Uh, delivery too is lower right now. We'll keep an eye out on what the reasons were for the net profit to decline 13%, even though we saw mild margin compression, not as much as the net profit would have you believe. Let's talk about the bigger gainer today, Infosys. Top Nifty gainer on the back of a stellar set of numbers coming in from uh, the company in the first quarter. They also hiked their growth outlook to 3 to 4% from the earlier range of 1 to 3% itself. Reema joins in with the detailed analysis of those numbers. Reema. 
So Infosys is still holding up in the green despite the big rally that we've seen. This is a stock which is up 28% since the beginning of June and Q1 numbers are justifying the rally. Strong beat on revenue, strong beat on margins and the company has gone ahead and upped its full year revenue forecast to 3-4%. to Bernstein says the company has delivered its strongest beat in the last 10 quarters. Nomura says Infosys is our top pick. They've raised the target price to 1950. Jeffrey says, in context of the Q1 beat and the performance, the FI25 guidance also seems conservative, especially when you see the strong deal wins. And Goldman Sachs, too, says that there are upside risks to the increased guidance. All right, Reema, but we can't let you go at that. Persistent systems as well as seen a sharp fall uh, post that big dip that we saw on margins. Tell us more. You know, on persistent, the street is a bit concerned about the margin performance. So reported margins have declined by 50 basis points to 14%. This is lower than street expectation. But you know, even this 14% has some element of one-offs. And the one-offs are estimated to have boosted margins by 150 to 200 basis points. But there is no taking away from the fact that this growth has been very strong for the company. A 5.6% industry leading, a very, very strong top-line performance. But as I said, some concern on margin and plus the stock has been a big out performer since the beginning of June the stock is up 35% outperforming Nifty IT which has rallied about 24-25% and plus the premium valuations. All right Reema thanks a lot for that that's about persistent and Infosys uh, just a word on Blue Dart once again the profitability profitability has been impacted more by non-cash uh, expenses like depreciation <coughs> which have increased from about 99 crores to close to around 118 odd crores the margins have compressed a tad bit. Uh, we've seen some sort of revenue growth, but uh, the street would have liked a little more than that for Blue Dart itself. Explains why the stock is down by about 5%. Uh, good time to get in. Prakash Diwan now joining in. Prakash, so much to speak about. Individual stocks, the IT space, which has been doing well. FMCG has been resilient as well. And then a couple of these uh, individual numbers that come by as well. Um, let's start with uh, the IT pack itself. Uh, Infosys, Persistent, both Rima spoke about. Infosys has been on a tear. Persistent, the margins are a bit of a miss. What are your thoughts here? Good afternoon, uh, So, yes, you know, what, what IT numbers are telling us is that everybody is trying to shore up in terms of uh, its, its revenue growth. And, of course, you know, at some point, there's some sort of a clawback of margins in terms of, you know, uh, whether the margins that we've seen in the last two, three quarters, can we can make some sort of a departure from there. Uh, Infosys has successfully done so. Persistent uh, has not been persistent with the margin growth. So, uh, and and you know what is important is that we understand that some of these stocks ran up in anticipation of an improved environment, which probably is still not very clear. If you ask me, the the, the three big numbers that have come through haven't yet given any kind of an affirmation on. Uh, the improvement in the uh, the environment itself. A persistent, if you remember, there was a Bernstein report where some of these auto-related businesses, the ENRD businesses, were evaluated, and that was the time when it probably was at the same level, four, five, five, zero, whatever. But it, it saw a very rapid move in anticipation of some sort of a growth, but which has not come through. So the market is not willing to be very very gracious about a uh, promise ahead, but they're very clearly markets looking at numbers which have happened and very clear visibility of the numbers in the next two quarters. So I think IT will go through this uh, this up and down kind of a mood. But my sense is we'll still have to wait for one more quarter, Mangal, for IT to, to actually start getting some sort of a capital allocation, which makes it serious. Till now, it's, 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 it's really, you know, we're flirting with some moves here and there, but it's really not something which uh, is a secular trend that's coming back. So I would say be cautious, don't get excited just with one of numbers. Uh, you know, you could have an influence in the portfolio, continue building up on that, holding that up, but don't don't uh, make any fresh allocations to IT on the basis of what we've seen till now. Okay, all right. Uh, Prakash, Prakash, uh, I wanted your word, you know, on which co cement company. Any guesses? Which one? Dalmia. Dalmia. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So let's uh, do a quick analysis and then I want to come across because, you know, over the years, you have sure. timed that pretty much... Uh, Bang on. So let's get to the numbers. Numbers look good. A bit are much better than what we, we were working with. Margins as well, much better than what the sheet was working with. And the reason for the beat was realizations on a sequential basis. Well, they in fact, uh, uh, you know, didn't decline as much as what the street. In fact, they were more or less flattish. That's point number one. Second factor was the cost come, came down drastically, both on a sequential basis and year in year. So both those factors put it together. The beta number was much better. But why is the stock down? Well, a few reasons then. There is weakness in pricing, which continues. 
the cement exit price uh, as of the last quarter, well, they are 3% lower than the average of the first quarter. So that's telling you pricing pressure will continue. Dalmia Bharat, though, on the pricing front, you'll say, why was their realization more or less flattish on a sequential basis? They altered their product mix. They also rationalized some part of their discounts, and that was the reason. Point number two, the other factor the street could be a little bit disappointed uh, about is that by 2027, they were saying that the capacity goes to 75 million tons. Now, they're saying not 2027, it'll be 2028. So some pushback out there. What are the other takeaways from their con call? Well, on cost, they're planning on reducing cost by around 150 to 200 million tons. They'll get high amount of captive coal. They are looking at renewable energy as well. And reduction in lead distance, that's the reason why they're saying that they'll be able to, uh, you know, focus on the cost side and reduce cost by 150 to 200 uh, uh, rupees per ton. On the JPA assets, actually, well, how much did it come in? Remember, there's a tolling agreement currently out there. So JP assets contributed 0.4 million tons. So X of JPA, which is now not going to come in their fold, actually there was no volume growth whatsoever, but they are still in discussions uh, with the regulators to see what can be worked out on that front. And the last factors, they say they're continuing to grow better than what the sheet was working with. They say industry will grow by close to around 8% and they'll grow 1.5 times, which means that if you uh, try to extrapolate that, they're guiding for around 11 to around 12%. Prakash, you know, in the last one year, if I look at the chart of Dalmia Bharat and Altatec Cement, Altatec Cement has seen a big re-rating. But Dalmia Bharat, even year to date, we're talking about this big bull market run. And Dalmia Bharat hasn't participated. In fact, it's low. I think my uh, director will get that chart up. What's the word on the, uh, on the asset from year on, you know, on Dalmia Bharat? Because valuation-wise, there is support. The problem is JP is not yeah. going to come in its fold. Maybe that capacity addition is not going to be going according uh, to, to trend. And the pricing pressure is definitely hitting them. Tell us. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think there was a brilliant analysis, Nigel, as always. Uh, and, you know, the reason why you recall about four months back, it said it's time to kind of uh, switch out of Dalmia Bharat precisely for, you know, some of these uncertainties that have started plaguing the company. One, uh, you know, they've not been able to organically grow. And the inorganic growth that they tried is also kind of a bit sketchy. Remember, we are in an environment where the big getting bigger is always going to be beneficial to those large players. If Dalmia Bharat doesn't scale up, uh, you know, it, it tends to lose a lot of uh, market uh, presence in that sense. Uh, pricing is, of course, a challenge. Even if the industry grows at 8%, if they were to grow at 10 or 12%, which they are talking about, they'll need to reinvent themselves on certain counts. Right now, the benefit on margins is primarily attributed to lower raw material costs. There's absolutely no other efficiency buildup which has is, which is happened. Now, all these new talk about the solarization, you know, some of those other things that they're looking at doing, and, and the project uh, and this expansion coming through in only FI28 uh, and beyond, I think uh, you'll have to give it time. So let them let them get to the drawing board in terms of all of those. And if that were to start showing some signs of uh, of getting in place, you will see a re-rating happen. So why it's not outperformed the likes of Ultratech? Because it was already priced well. Uh, it did fetch a little bit of a better valuation. Ultratech caught up uh, on, on some of those counts and actually has gone ahead. So it's as simple as that. It's a phase of the, the cycle uh, of, of this business where it's probably going through a little bit of consolidation. Uh, so company, look at companies like JK. Now, JK Cement has come and, and started doing a lot of right things, which it was earlier not able to do because of whatever reasons, decision-making and all of that. But today, uh, the way they are poised, you will probably see a run there in terms of you know people realizing that they've got their act together on some of those very you know, simple efficiency-related uh, uh, matters. So you know this happens in every sector where where leadership rotates where the promise rotate you know is moving from one to the other but i would i would definitely look at the jk cement uh, in view of dalvia bharat now for at least a medium term all right as in just on cue uh, prakash you know we're discussing the cement space uh, we understand the ultratech uh, numbers are out on the wires uh, soon enough we'll get some more analysis going on out there the one number that we have at the bottom of your screen is the net profit 1695 crores versus the cnbc tv18 poll of 1728 crores doesn't tell you much we have to look at uh, you know the revenues the ebitda and uh, more importantly the volumes of uh, you know ultratech as well going forward the revenue is largely in line actually 18070 crores versus the cnbc tv18 poll of 18059 odd crores itself uh, the stock is mildly lower in today's trading session though it has been lower from the start of the session itself not uh, much change ever since the results have come. Uh, the EBITDA, that's a bit lower than expectations. 3,041 crores versus a poll 
of 3,319 crores itself. So what we have so far for Ultratech, net profit mildly below street expectations at 1,695 crores versus a poll of 1,728 crores, led lower by the EBITDA, which has come in at a little over 3,000 crores. The street was working with a number of 3,300 crores thereabout. And revenue has been largely in line. And that explains why, you know, uh, the margin has missed estimates at 16.8 percent versus 18.4 percent as well. Nigel's going through some of these numbers. But Nigel, uh, from the front uh, line numbers that we have right now, the revenue margins and EBITDA, what does it look like? Well, these numbers are disappointing, actually, Mangalam. You know, these are the numbers and this is no one-off because there is a benefit that they've got of lower power and fuel cost. But that margin that was flashing on the screen, well, that's a bit of a disappointment. I'll tell you what, you know, there's no uh, cooling off on the freight and forwarding expenditure, not much at least out there. On uh, the power and fuel cost, there has been some decline, but maybe the street was anticipating a little bit more of a decline out there. And what's gone up actually on a year-on-year -year basis is the other expenditure. So we'll require some clarity on that front. This margin number for the time being, that's a little bit worrying that because the top line is pat in line with what we are working with. We are waiting by for the volume number. To give you a sense, we are working with volume growth of close to around 5, 5, 5 5.5 to 6% approximately, which is more or less in line with what the sheet was working with. But we are expecting pricing to remain weak. So uh, just trying to get out further details on that front. There is some cooling off on power and fuel costs. But uh, we'll have to wait by for further details. Uh, I think we have got uh, operations. Yes, domestic sales volume growth is around 6%. So no uh, worry on the, uh, on the top line. Energy costs actually are lower by close to 17% on a year-on-year -year basis because of the reduction in fuel co cost. But the raw, raw material costs, they rose by close to 100%. That's attributable to the increase in cost of fly ash. So, you know, that's uh, the key, key reason why, in fact, these numbers could be a little bit softer. Volume growth in line. Maybe the realizations were under pressure, but it appears it's as much as expected. And maybe they have not got that benefit in terms of operating leverage on uh, the raw material costs, which explains this miss out there. But let's get in uh, Ronald, uh, the associate uh, vice president at Sher Khan uh, by BNP Paribas, who joins us. Hi, Ronald. Good afternoon. Good to see you win. Well, volume number, no worries. But the margin picture is a little bit worrying, you know, which our, uh, uh, which our ticker team has uh, put out there. Could you tell us your first take on the numbers? Uh, yeah, actually, we were estimating around 5.5% volume growth. So, volume growth, as you said, yes, in line with uh, uh, the estimates. Uh, uh, but uh, we are expecting around 18.8% operating margin, a little over 1,000 rupees uh, beta per ton. So, uh, that uh, we need to check whether we know that has come in line or not. But overall, we have seen that quarter one has been weak in country, like in the army call also, there was a highlight that 2 to 4 percent uh, uh, volume growth was on, only there for the industry. So, uh, the Almia and Ultratech, you know, reporting 6 percent volume growth is good enough for quarter one in terms of, you know, they have been trying to, you know, gain market share and that may have led to lower realization and a little bit, you know, of it on the EBITDA per ton. But the Almia's uh, performance in terms of EBITDA per ton was better than expectation. That's correct. But, uh, you know, the, the street expects the best from the largest player, right? So I guess that's the reason why, in fact, the stock is pulling back a little bit. And as we were just talking about, the stock has asked his rallied, I think, 25-30% just in the last one year. What's the view on the stock, Ronald? The stock is down 3% as of now. There seems to be some pressure on margins, and it will continue in all probability for uh, the coming quarter as well, because pricing is still weak, as we know, and we're already in a seasonally weak quarter. So if the stock falls, say, another 2-3% from year on, would you be a buyer? Uh, yeah, definitely. Considering the strong pullback, uh, the strong run-up they have seen, there would be, you know, pullback. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, four or five percent, uh, 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 you know, single-digit pullback should be a buying opportunity for the stock. Pricing environment will remain weak, uh, as you know, exit prices uh, for quarter one are still three percent lower than the average quarter one prices. So, pricing environment will be weak. But uh, all eyes would be there on quarter three in terms of demand and pricing. That being said, you know, more, all the cement players are, you know, uh, trying to gain benefits from the operating cost per ton. So what is Ultratech's view in terms of, you know, uh, getting more out of OPEX per ton? Each and every company has certain targets of reducing operating cost per ton in, uh, because the pricing environment may not remain favorable for, you know, at least for H1 FY25. Okay. All right, uh, Ronald, thanks for that uh, quick first analysis. Appreciate you being with us.
That's ultra tech, disappointing, and uh, well, the stock's dealing with it, 3% down. I guess, Nigel, you, you said it, right? Uh, that uh, from the largest player, from the big giant, yeah. the expectations usually run higher. And uh, there's a miss on that margin yeah, front. Yeah, I'll tell you the problem, Sulbi. The problem is that, you know, the industry didn't grow that much, but Alditech mm. wants to grow better than the street. Mm. Something's got to give, right? And it appears pricing is giving yeah. away right now. The large, they want to get larger. The smaller guys are going to get gobbled up. But in the interim, there's going to be pricing pressure. What's, mm. in a, so in the longer term, it's going to be good, all this entire talk of consolidation. But in the near term, everyone wants to stand their turf. They want to get, uh, you know, a higher amount of the market share. And just one more quick word, you know, we'll wait by for further details. But for the time being, just pull up the India Day chart of Orient Cement as well as India Cement. Plenty of buzz yesterday. As of now, I've not yet seen any mention of that. The street expected something or the other mm. to come on both these two fronts. Officially, we know that, you know, Altatech has gone ahead and picked up more than 20% stake on India Cement. And yesterday, the stock was up close to 10%. As of now, there's no mention as uh, as yet, but we'll wait by for the press release. So that's why, you know, in the last uh, few minutes, the stock actually has come off the high point of the day. And no mention with regard mm. to Orient Cement as well. Not not yet, at least. That's the, that's the key <laughs> word uh, in right. there. Well, Cement, you never know. Yeah. So much going on in that sector, right? So you, any... know, you know, sometimes I get nervous on a Friday evening as well. I just want to take it easy and then suddenly... <laughs> as long as they don't announce on a Friday. Out of nowhere, suddenly... Yeah, I mean, I was happy that actually Ambuja went ahead and picked up Pena on, on a week. I think it was Thursday <laughs> evening. So you get a little nervous because these deals are coming out of anywhere. And we know, I have my ear to the ground. I know a few deals are in the works. But I just hope... Just Monday to Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Monday to Thursday. All right. And, and definitely not next week because you have the budget and all these things yeah, as well. Yeah. So if maybe if the deal makers could just, just hold off a while longer, okay? <laughs> Prakash, before we let you go, a word on Ultratech if you want. And, you know, I wanted to ask you, there's a bit of a mini sale going on in the mid-cap market, which is a rarity these days. I mean, you've got Cummins coming off, there's Dixon down. Quite a few, I mean, even some of the, uh, uh, the PSU players and some of the defense players as well. Anything you're buying in yeah. this sale? No, so, so essentially, uh, this was not a surprise. Uh, in fact, I would have expected this to begin from Monday itself, where it's probably taken a few more days. Uh, this is lightning of positions will be before you go into an event like a budget. You know, what the budget is going to do is it's not going to make things very disturbingly bad or unfavorable. I think the budget is going to set the tone for the next few years and set some new uh, direction for some new sectors to emerge. So while defense and power and railway, all of those themes kind of have done very well, the stocks need a little bit of a cool off. And, and you'll probably have newer opportunities coming, whether it's in waste management, water management, space, um, you know, EVs. So, so there's lots that's possible. And I think market's kind of getting enough for that and sitting on cash to, to be able to take advantage of anything new that comes up. So, and, and of course, we if there is consolidation, which probably begins with the small caps, moves to the mid caps and the large caps, it's healthier for the market because then you you have sector rotation, which is not very drastic. So if that's gradual, next two months, it's probably going to be very good for people who want to buy long term. And I'm saying this uh, till till almost like September, you might see this kind of a thing where we are sideways or soft. So good for us uh, who, who want to buy value and not necessarily participate in momentum. So I wouldn't be very surprised, but there's regular profit booking, which is underway. Uh, and that's, that's evident in the markets. Take that point. Interesting, uh, because Chris Wood also said that, you know, India is the only exception in the world where the small caps are doing a lot better than the large caps, where everywhere else uh, there has been uh, narrowing of the market strength or concentration in just a few large cap stocks itself. Uh, wonderful speaking with you, Prakash, as always. Wish you a very happy weekend. In fact, before that, we'll also, uh, you know, get you on for Reliance results and get your opinion on that as well. But for now, good break, uh, you know, and uh, enjoy the holiday. Come back on the other side, we'll get chatting with uh, Rajesh Kothari of Alf Accurate Advisors. Uh, he'll speak about the markets and a lot of individual stocks too.
Welcome back. So, uh, not much changing on the screens. The same thing we're reporting, 240 down on the Nifty. And the mid-cap index is still nursing a cut of about 1%. We have uh, Rajesh Kothari of ALF Accurate Advisors joining us on this leg of the show. Rajesh, good to have you on. So, the market's seeing a bit of a cool-off today, something that it doesn't usually do. But uh, you tell us if there have been any uh, you know, changes in the portfolio since our last conversation and what your uh, top bets or the biggest overweights are at this point in time. Well, frankly speaking, no major changes. Uh, you know, I think uh, we remain uh, bullish, extremely bullish on capital goods as a theme and uh, no change in that theme. In fact, uh, uh, as more and more global uh, you know, power shortages and the grid complexity, uh, we hear more of that in uh, Australia, in Europe, uh, and now in the USA, uh, that means more benefit to Indian companies uh, who have a competitiveness to uh, supply to the world market. So I think the capital goods is the theme will continue. Uh, and I think probably uh, in budget days, you will get more of that because the CapEx plans, be it railway, be it defense, or be it the power, and so on and so forth, will get further crystallized. So that's our first thing, and we remain fairly bullish on that. Our second theme is uh, in automobile and auto ancillaries. Uh, again, this space is doing extremely well, and the more electrification, as I keep talking about from last several years, uh, you know, the more the content per vehicle, and that's better for the auto ancillary names. And the third, of course, is the consumer. Uh, that's a space which we have been adding weight from last, uh, you know, three to four months, and uh, that space is also doing reasonably well. So these are the three themes, uh, you know, on which uh, you know we are positive and uh, have a good exposure uh, across our portfolios. Right, interesting. Uh, capital goods, auto ancillaries, and consumer itself. We'll speak about the consumer space in just a bit, uh, Rajesh. You know, I was looking at a couple of these tobacco stocks uh, uh, as they're moving right now ahead of the budget. We have ITC, which is up around a percent. We've seen a decentish rally on Godfrey Phillips as well. I call it more than de decentish because from the start of this year itself, the stock has almost doubled. And today, the big gainer is actually VST Industries. Uh, VST Industries is up in double digits at a time when the mid cap index is actually down uh, by almost a thousand points. More stocks uh, de declining for way more stocks declining for the number of stocks which are advancing. So the stock is at a fresh record high. The company has told the exchanges that uh, it will consider a bonus along with its results on July 25th itself. Now, what's interesting is if you look at all these tobacco stocks, you know, ITC has been absolutely flat this year, just about 3.5% higher. VST Industries, including today's move, is up 40% and Godfrey Phillips has doubled. And in the cigarette industry itself, VST has actually been a bit of an underperformer when it came to volume growth. So we have, you know, it was just the last quarter where the volumes turned positive. So if you look at the volume trend of VST Industries and compare that to the likes of, say, Godfrey Phillips or ITC, etc., you would see that the volume growth has been much slower than the other peers and they've been losing market share. But now, last quarter, things turned around and uh, the VST volume growth has actually turned slightly positive. So there you have Godfrey Phillips and ITC. The chart of VST comes up for you as well. You would see it was just the last quarter that they turned positive. The key triggers of the tobacco industry ahead of the budget in the first quarter is usually ahead of the budget, dealers stock a lot of inventory because they are pre-buying ahead of any sort of possible, possible tax, increase yeah. in uh, the uh, taxes for budget. And this time around, the state is not going with too many expectations of a tax increase in the budget because it was just the last year where there was a 16% hike in uh, you know, the NCCD. And typically, it does not happen for two consecutive years already. For VST Industries by itself, uh, remember the last quarter, they appointed a COO in the form of Sanjay Wali, who was ex-Godfrey. So, you know, that works for them. They've also initiated the process to monetize their Azambad property, which will be completed in FY25 itself. So, additional other income coming in in the company's books this year itself, if that were to happen. And RK Damani, the, uh, you know, marquee investor in the stock, increased his stake by about 3% in the last quarter itself. So, his action in the stock or his action in the company will be also something that we'll be watching out for. I spoke about how the stock has moved, but remember, Godfrey Phillips has moved much faster as a result of which, if you look at the valuation picture, you know, at the start of this year, Godfrey was at 16 times, VST was close to around 17, 18 times, with ITC around 24, 25 times. Now, ITC is 26 times, Godfrey is 32 times, and despite the 40% up move, VST is still 20 times. So, it's got valuation uptake, a bonus sweetener, and some fundamental reasons as well. So, let's see how that goes about. Okay, that explains the big move on VST today, 10%. It was actually 15, 16% in the morning, but still retaining an 11% up move on a day when the market is cooling off. Rajesh, I was looking at your uh, portfolio. The uh, This is, I think, the India Opportunities PMS, right? Now, when we talk consumer, you don't have too many staples, not even ITC in your portfolio, but we see other, other discretionary plays like a trend, 
you know, if I can take autos as an extension of discretionary consumer demand, then you've got TVS, you've got Hero, etc. So give us your thought process. I mean, Trend, I'm sure it's worked, worked wonders for you. But what about the rest of consumer, staples, etc.? Any change in stance there? A lot of people expect better numbers, rural recovery and, uh, you know, just market positioning to perhaps help this side of uh, things. So one thing is very clear, you know, we, we will do expect the rural recovery to happen in the current year. And there are multiple ways to play this rural. One is to uh, play through, you know, two-wheelers, uh, OEM companies. Uh, the few names, what you have mentioned, we are holding for our clients. Second is the auto ancillaries, which are also proxy. Uh, they are more uh, linked to two-wheelers, apart from the four-wheelers, but there is a more contained per vehicle. And that's another big chunk of a portfolio. And third is to play through the FMCG companies. And fourth is to play through the, you know, the consumer durable companies. So these are the four ways to play the rural recovery. And in each of this basket, we are holding them. So we are holding two wheelers, we are holding uh, auto ancillaries, we are holding, uh, you know, the staple companies, uh, you know, one of the largest FMCG companies we own in our portfolio. And of course, we are also holding the consumer durable companies. So that's, you know, so we, we believe that the consumption will continue to do well. Uh, rural recovery uh, after probably three years of uh, very, very low base, I think rural recovery on a low base can, can, can probably surprise the market. And on top of it, you know, as you expect the, you know, probably from budget related, a little bit of uh, what I would say, uh, some relief to the consumers uh, or some relief to the low income uh, strata demographic uh, kind of thing, you know. If that can help, then it can further aid to the overall rural economy bound. So we are having uh, a few companies uh, on staples as well, uh, you know, as far as the consumer segment goes. Okay, I, yeah, I guess because the fact sheet only has a top 20 holdings. Uh, yeah. Perhaps, obviously, it's later down uh, these companies would perhaps come through. Actually, uh, let's talk about one of your biggest holdings, and that's from the financial space, right? HDFC Bank. You also like a couple of other banks. I think ICICI as well. As well. But I think HDFC Bank is a big point of debate in the market right now. There are There's a camp that believes that its time has to come. It's just a qu question of uh, when and not if. But then there's another camp which believes that perhaps the best is simply behind and why waste more time waiting for the recovery here Look at other parts of the market. Where do you stand on things? I mean, obviously, you're positive. That's why you own it. Yeah, so basically, we were significantly underweight uh, on this name, uh, you know, uh, and then we started, uh, you know, increasing the weightage in last uh, uh, two and a half, three months. Uh, of course, the one thing which is, uh, uh, you know, everybody knows this name, but one important thing is the margin of safety. Uh, the valuations are in your favor. And, uh, you know, but, uh, as the overall loan book growth, as that starts coming back to the stronger numbers, like what it used to be uh, two and a half, three years back, then the stock price performance ultimately will uh, also also deliver and will, will reflect the UM growth. So I think uh, the bank will do well, uh, you know, uh, and therefore we we own this. But we also own many other banks. So our if you look at our overall total banking, we are still underweight. You know, benchmark is about 29, 30 uh, percent. We are about 25, 26 percent. So we are still underweight the banking uh, uh, as a space. Uh, you know, and we are we are monitoring it. There are a few uh, affordable housing names what we have in our portfolio, uh, which are doing exceptionally well. Uh, so, if you ask me again, within banking and finance, uh, you know, one is the NBFC on which we are fairly positive. Private sector banks is the second very fairly positive, and third is basically the others, which includes the platform companies, which are uh, you know like digital insurance business and so on and so forth. So, these are the kind of three baskets to play uh, through the entire banking and finance. All right, take that point. Thank you so much, Rajesh, for joining in and giving us your view on uh, a whole host of sectors. Uh, meanwhile, as we speak, the bottom of your screen, you have the numbers coming in from B BPCL as well. EBITDA is a lot lower than what the street was anticipating this time around. Margins are at around 5% versus a CNBC TV18 poll of 6%. Stock is lower in trade as well. Some of the other internals also indicate that volume growth this time around for the company has been close to around 3.2%. And the average gross refining margins for the quarter have been $7.86 per barrel. This compares uh, with $12.64 per barrel year on year. So there has been a big decline in the gross refining margins as well. And uh, mild foreign exchange loss of about 3.31 crore, uh, very small in their overall scheme of things. But EBITDA coming in at 5.650 crores versus a poll of 6.170 crores explains why the stock is at the low point of trade. It's been a sort of a barring emphasis, a trail of not so great earnings, right? I mean, Asian Pay Store market positioning was different, but just in terms of numbers, Havels, Polycab, uh, Ultratech, Ultratech just a while back, now BPCL. So, hmm, not the best last couple of hours, or, you know, 12 to 4, 24 hours 
for some of these big earnings. Paytm included, of course, big loss over there as well. Anyhow, let's take a break on that note. We'll uh, come back on the other side and get you a lot more on the market. Of course, we'll get you uh, all the chatter from the street. Nimesh will join in and then some more trading ideas coming up with Mitesh. Welcome back. At the low point of the day, the Nifty is holding on to the 24,500 odd. By the way, Altitech Cement has moved to the low point of the day. Just one quick word, those margins were weak. This appears as a one-time branding expenditure. That's the reason why the other expenditure had spiked up. We don't know the exact quantum, but that's one of the reasons why the margins did miss. So we'll keep an eye out on that front. And the other factor is the fuel consumption cost per ton. That is flat quarter and quarter. While for Dalmia Bharat, you had around a $9 decrease in the fuel consumption cost. So... For the clarity is waited on that. But uh, let's go to Nimesh. He can help us out with uh, how is he reading the dealing room action. Nimesh, after a while, right? I mean, at 3 p.m. we ask you, Nimesh, what's going on? The markets are a little bit lower. Yes, Nigel. You know, in fact, there are multiple reasons today for the markets to have such a kind of a fall. The index is down 1%. The mid-cap index has seen a bigger brunt. That index is down 2 percent but a lot of individual names are under pressure today. I guess the big reason is the global outrage, which is impacting a lot of businesses and it's impacting the, uh, the financial, uh, financial markets as well. I understand a lot of uh, you know, retail investors are unable to participate and, and execute trades, whether at a, broker, uh, whether at a brokerage level or at a, or, or at a platform level. And some are facing uh, problems with the custodian level as well. So that, I think, is one of the big reasons why you're seeing a big, big knock in the, in the broader market stocks today. Uh, from a flow perspective, from the larger FIs, even there, I understand there's a bit of force selling as well in the leverage name. So that explains that the mid-cap index is down 2%. But look at the, look at the momentum sectors. Uh, all the high beta sectors, including uh, metals, real estate, PSUs, all are down between 2 to 3%, 3 3.5% as well. So looks like the, you know, that, that's, that's where the pain seems to be. Also, remember, you know, uh, there is a lack of buying interest as well out of the big uh, event, which is budget, which is next week. And, it, and, and in general, there is a bit of nervousness as well going into the big event because of the risk of, of maybe there could be something as regard to taxation. So even that's adding to a bit of pressure in today's market. But net-net, I guess a lot of retail uh, investors have not been able to participate. And also there is a bit of force selling, which has led to a big sell-off in the broader market stocks today.
All right, that explains uh, the move, uh, Nimesh. Thanks a lot for that. That's about the broader markets in general and markets on the whole, actually. But a lot of individual stocks on, our, on your radar. I mean, as we move into the results season, a lot of these uh, promoter lock-ins and all these lock-ins begin. So does that still keep the deal street uh, high when it comes to all the block deals, etc.? Well, you know, not block deals, but at least fundraisings, QIPs that are still pretty mm. much on the cards. And even the non-promoter non holders can keep selling blocks, right? So that's, that seems to be something which is going to continue. But in terms of individual names, the first drug is ITC. Surprisingly, uh, just uh, uh, two days before the budget, uh, you know, to see a bit of confidence in a, in a stock like ITC is a bit surprising. So that stands out for me. There are very strong buy flows at FI, this is what I understand. So it looks like some institutional interest is back on that stock. And remember, the record date for the, for the, de for the demerger of the hotel business is still pending. So even that, seem to, that seems to be a, a, a trigger to watch as far as ITC is concerned. The second stock is Jyoti CNC. You know, uh, again, while well, the stock has been consolidating, today uh, with, uh, with the carnage, even that stock is down 600 percent. But now I understand there's going to be a large block deal very soon in, uh, in Jyoti CNC. And the last one is Vodafone Idea. You know, uh, surprisingly, in the last few days, despite good, uh, good news, that stock has been under pressure. In fact, it shaved off almost 12-13 uh, percent from the recent highs. And one of, one of the reasons is that one of the leading domestic mutual funds was an aggressive buyer in the, in the FPO. They seem to be you know, booking out some, uh, some, uh, some profit in, in, uh, in Vodafone Idea. And that's been the key reason why uh, of late uh, there is high delivery based uh, buying or selling. And the stock is under pressure because of that reason. Okay, all right, Nimesh, got it. Thank you very much for all the buzz and all the chatter there on the stocks that you've picked up today. Well, uh, let's go back and focus on BPCL. That stock's still nursing a loss of around 4-4.5%. Four, four there you go. The numbers are still on your screen. That EBITDA is way below estimates. Sonal is here with the fine print. Sonal, uh, not quite what the street expected? Uh, well, yes, it's lower than what the street was working with. It was expected to be lower on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis because the marketing segment was uh, supposed to see lower margins. Even GRMs globally have seen a big decline as well. Uh, petrol and diesel cracks both are down on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Now, if you look at the internals, let's just talk about the headline numbers first. Uh, the revenues are down 2.6%, EBITDA is down 39%, margins have come in lower at 5% versus an expectation of 6% versus a poll of 8%. Uh, net profits are down... Uh, uh, as well, just 29% versus a bigger EBITDA decline. That's because of two reasons. Depreciation, uh, that is lower on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis and taxes also are lower on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. That's why the decline in net profit is lower than that of EBITDA. Now, if you talk about the internals, the refining margins are better than what the street was working with. They have come in at $7.86 per barrel versus a poll of $6.7 a barrel. Even the highest number on the street was around that $7.5 per barrel. So, refining has done well here versus the street expectations, though it has declined on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. So, it looks like there's a bigger miss in the marketing segment. The marketing uh, growth volumes have been lower than expectations. The refining throughput has been lower than expectations as well. So, it looks like it's a volume-led miss this time around. We'll get more details in terms of what the inventory loss or profit was this time around. But this time around, the miss is largely led by marketing segment. Refining is slightly better than what the street was working with. All right, Sonal, thanks a lot for that. That explains uh, BPCL numbers. Uh, refining has been better, whereas the marketing segment has been weaker. And uh, the volumes out there have been lower than expectations as well. In the bottom of your screen, you also had some uh, news and update coming in on Zydus Life. It's been a big mover. Some Updates from the US FDA, one of their plants has gotten two observations as well. That stock um, nursing a cut of almost three odd percent uh, right now. No, nothing big, I mean, no different from what it was for most part of today's trading session. Good part, uh, good time to rather get you, uh, you know, uh, trades for tomorrow or for Monday. Mitesh joins in for the reverse trade on Monday, buy or sell or sell or buy as well. Mitesh, uh, what's on your list? I have two SCVT calls. One is uh, World Class with a star, but about it. Uh... Uh, 1486 for targets of 1455 and excited after a long time, you know, showing signs of profit looking. So excited is the STBT with the starboard 545 for targets of 530. Okay. All right. Got it, Pandesh. Thank you very much uh, for being with us uh, today and through the week. You have a good weekend and we'll connect again on Monday. Take a break right now. We'll be back with more Market Talk in just a bit.
Welcome back. Well, uh, it's a market that's really desperately trying to hold on to yesterday's low. Remember, Nigel was saying that at the start of the show, and the low yesterday was just around the 24,500 mark. Let's see. I mean, maybe just about eight minutes. Perhaps we will, uh, you know, save it. Uh, we have Hemang Jani joining us on this leg of the show, and we also have Abhishek with us. We'll uh, get into the HDFC numbers in just a bit. Hemang, hi. Afternoon. Sell-off going on. Have you bought anything today? Good afternoon, uh, Surbhi. I think uh, after a long time, we are seeing a meaningful correction in the market, both at the index level and in the broader market. Uh, while the run-up has been so swift, uh, so, you know, and we are not used to seeing this kind of correction, so uh, it kind of uh, surprises uh, some people. But I think, uh, you know, it's it's pretty normal. So, you know, wherever the numbers have been good and, uh, you know, overall uh, valuation comfort is there, we do look out for buying opportunities. So, you know, maybe in some of the IT names, uh, uh, HDFC Life, some of the, you know, uh, private insurance uh, plays, uh, oil and gas has been a space that we've been liking. So, wherever we are seeing a meaningful correction in companies like ONGC, Gale, uh, we are kind of looking out for buying opportunities. So, overall, I think, uh, you know, things would uh, stabilize because we have to bear in mind that this just confined to India, but globally also last two days, we are seeing a bit of correction in the US markets and, and currency volatility is also there across. So I think we should brace for some more volatility, but it will sure present great opportunities as well. All right, speaking about opportunities, you know, one of the spaces which hasn't done very well is the private banking space in general. And two of uh, the bigger banks, we have HDFC Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank, both of them expected to report their numbers tomorrow. Abhishek joins in to tell us more about what the street is factoring in from both these big boys, HDFC Bank and Kotak. Abhishek. Uh, well, Manglam, SDFC Bank had given a hint with respect to the business momentum uh, wherein uh, the CASA has declined. However, liquidity coverage ratio has improved. So, deposits were flat on a sequential basis. CASA ratio down by nearly 200 basis point quarter on quarter and advances were down by 0.8% sequentially. So, analysts are expecting net interest margin to remain flat. So, uh, Kotak Securities and Morgan Stanley, uh, both of them are estimating net interest margin to be flat on a sequential basis at around 3.4%. Now, Philip Capital and Morgan Stanley uh, estimates uh, slippages to be at 8,000 crore versus 7,300 crore in the previous quarter, which is seasonal in nature. Q1 slippages are slightly higher for all the lenders versus Q4. Uh, so credit cost is expected to decline quarter on quarter. Morgan Stanley estimates 181 basis point decline in the credit cost on a sequential basis. Asset quality largely to remain stable. Again, uh, we have Philip Capital that estimates gross NPA ratio at 1.25% versus 1.24% in the previous quarter. Now, we cannot compare the YOY numbers because of SDFC Limited's merger. So, sequentially, NI is expected to be up 1.7% YOY and PAT is expected to decline 5% on a sequential basis. Uh, coming on to Kotak Mahindra Bank, the key thing to watch over there will be the deposit growth momentum that will be seen closely. Loan growth expected to remain healthy. So, loan growth as per Philip Capital is estimated to grow at 17.5% YOY and about 2.7% sequentially. Net interest margin as per Morgan Stanley estimate is expected to decline 34 basis point of YOY and about 5 basis points sequentially. You need to watch out for the low cost deposit ratio, how that behaves. It has been on a declining trend for all the lenders. Last quarter for Kotak Bank, it was at 45 and a half percent. Slippages are seen 1400 crore uh, as per Morgan Stanley versus 1300 crore in the previous quarter. Seasonal in nature, asset quality expected to improve. So our poll suggests an ag growth of 13 and a half percent YOY and about 6 16% YOY growth in profits for Kotak Mahindra Bank. Back to you. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Abhishek. Well, uh, let's get in some market opinion before we wind up. Uh, we spoke to NJ Kumar, Group CEO and MD and Prime Securities, after the market uh, town hall earlier this week to get his views on the market and the way forward. I started by asking him about sectors that he likes and he believes are under-owned. Let's listen in. A couple of sectors, actually. One, uh, uh, clearly pharmaceutical. Uh, and some of the triggers here being under-owned space, low on index weightage, uh, balance sheets are outstandingly good, PLI in that space is uh, creating more opportunities, and the entire generics picture in the US. Pricing is still stable, and US shortages of drugs continues. Mm. So if you take a combination of this, and the fact that this is an undervalued, under-owned space, 
uh, I, I would love uh, to continue investing in uh, pharmaceutical despite the overall markets being at lofty levels. Okay, all right. So pharma is one theme that you like from here on. The other one, Jake, that I'm looking at is something that uh, you know you have been very, very passionate about and you believe that this cycle in metals is here to stay. Sure. Everyone's talking about it's a periodical move. You have been telling me for years now that Nigel, this is here to stay and Indian metal companies are very, very well placed. You have rate cuts as well that we're looking forward to in the Fed. How are you feeling about it right now? And what's the preference at current reckoning between ferrous and non-ferrous? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily differentiate between the two because A, uh, mining and mineral capacities are difficult to recreate, number one. Number two, in the context of consolidation everywhere in the world, people have been selling off their coal assets, selling off other assets. Existing companies are becoming stronger. Number three, deleverage balance sheets. So go for balance sheets that are able to take on uh, you know, more debt in terms of capacity expansion. Number four, most of the companies are now increasing capacities on an organic basis with internal accruals. And number five, cost cuts. All these make, to my mind, along with the tailwinds of uh, a, a cut in interest rates overseas, I, I personally believe uh, this sector could surprise us. In fact, many of the stocks are quoting at lifetime highs, but I think it's, uh, if you take EV bidda multiples, they are still middling to uh, high single-digit multiples compared to the rest of the uh, market, if you will. And to my mind, uh, some of these like consolidation and cost cuts make these very exciting even going forward. Stable, solid returns rather than you know spiky uh, uh, doublers, et cetera, but solid returns coming from the spaces can't be ruled out. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Jake's uh, top picks out there continues to remain bullish on select pharma names as well as on metal stocks as well. But Hemang is still with us. Hemang, I wanted to ask you your view on SBI. You know, that's the one that's uh, actually been an outperformer. And if you look at it year to date, it's actually outperformed HDFC Bank by a mile. Uh, your view on the stock? Yes, uh, clearly, uh, Nigel, if you look at the stock, it is at the you know all-time high levels of while the bank nifty itself is struggling. And even in terms of quarterly performance, uh, we all have seen how uh, the you know quarterly update was for HDFC Bank and a few banks. So I think in terms of performance also, there is going to be a decent amount of surprise with a very strong advanced growth. And typically, budget as an event, I think SBI could be an interesting you know, play over there. So both 40 numbers perspective, budget perspective, uh, you know, it is looking uh, quite positive to us. And uh, if you, if you, you know, if you're able to participate uh, in this volatile times uh, at uh, maybe, you know, 3 to 4 percent kind of a cut from current levels, that would be an ideal scenario. Irrespective, I think uh, this is one of our high conviction budget picks. Thanks a lot yeah. for that, uh, Hemang. Always good hearing your thoughts. Wishing you a good Friday evening and a rocking weekend ahead. We touch base with you next week itself. But time to wind down on the markets. It was a weak trading session. The last tick is at the low point of the day. And if you wanted uh, reasons why the market should fall today, you had plenty of it. Big event coming up. Weak overnight queues. Big losers today. Metals were under pressure. Tata Steel, JSW Steel. The biggest losers on the Nifty. We have JSW Steel's numbers that will be hitting the exchanges in the next five to ten minutes from now. BPCL, Hindalco, all of them were lowered in trade. On the flip side, Infosys, the low ranger that ended high with a gain of closure around 2%. Numbers look good. Stock came off the high point of the day, but that at least had one end up. And ITC was a stock that ended with a gain of around half a percent. Broader markets, a lot of selling pressure. Only 385 stocks were advancing. More than 2,000 stocks were declining. Mid caps are under pressure. Small caps as well did take a bit of a knock. Um, yeah, absolutely. Look at these names. LNT Finance, 5% lower. Manampuram, 5% down. BHEL, 4.7%. Actually, a lot of selling in the PSU space. Uh, the, the Nifty PSE index is off 4% for the week. It's one of the weakest performers along with metals. Uh, so if you talk about more uh, PSU names, Gale, Sale, um, you know, uh, quite a few of these uh, PSU banks like IOB, all of them trending down. So not a great day for these stocks. The non-PSU side, even there, I mean, Cummins, JSW Infra on those numbers. Uh, you've got KEI Industries losing 6%, persistent on, num on numbers. Basically, round, uh, you know, uh, complete roundup of profit-taking. Uh, Mastec, it's just a long list of losers out there. So, tough day for the mid-cap market. 1,300 points gone from that index. And the Nifty just about managing to close above. 24,500. Well, it's a wrap on this edition of Closing Bell. It's been a week of consolidation, but don't go anywhere. More perspective coming up next is Editor's Roundtable.